Thanks for listening to the Belonging House Fellowship Podcast. Here is this week's message from Chris John Otto and the House of Artisans. I've had the luxury of teaching from John's Gospel for all the services this week. And as some of you know, John is my favorite writer in the Bible. All his books are my favorite. The Gospel of John is my favorite book in the Bible. I love uh, all the letters of John. I love the book of Revelation. I believe they're all written by the same person, uh, largely because I memorized great swaths of these things uh, when I was young. And it was in the memorization that I I really got the thought process in these books in my head. And that's why I think they all were written by the same person, because the same person was thinking in this writing. I love the letters of those who were taught by John. You know, we have a lot of material from the first and second century by Justin Martyr, Ignatius, and Polycarp. And you can see John's direct legacy in those that led the church into the second century. There is continuity. We So many people think that everything ended with the book of Acts and then picked up at the Reformation. But we have a lot of continuity. John's book is an amazing piece of literature. It's multidimensional. There's so many layers and ways to read the Gospel of John. It's kind of amazing, really. You can follow the water. That's one of the best things you can do in John. And I used to give talks. I had just a a little blue drop of water in the margins. And I could go from one drop of water to another and tell the story of John just from the water. And that's a story about the Holy Spirit. You can look at the book of John as the book of the new creation. Book about the new creation. The first two chapters of of John mirror Genesis 1 through 3. You can follow the I Ams. That's a story all by itself. The I Ams. And all that they say about Jesus and all that they say about the Father, you can follow the encounters. In some years during Lent, you know, all the readings in Lent are just the encounters Jesus has with people in the book of John. Mary, Nicodemus, the Samaritan woman, blind Bartimaeus, the woman caught in adultery, and Lazarus. And then you can follow the love. You can follow the love, and that tells a story all by itself. This story in John really begins at a wedding. That's where the story begins. It's where the movement happens. The wedding is where the ministry of Jesus begins. And Jesus, almost from the beginning, in the next chapter after the wedding, he talks about the cross. Jesus said in John 3, I'm going to be lifted up. Just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and I will draw all men, the whole world, unto myself. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Everlasting life is all about being in love with the Father. And Jesus tells them at the Last Supper, a new commandment I give you, love one another. In other words, live like you live in heaven here. And then he demonstrates it. And he teaches it for all those chapters that I talked about last night. And then he prays for us that we would discover the love of the Father. People love theology, 
And you know, we could talk about theology all night. But nobody cares. You know, those are those are answers to questions nobody's asking. I wrote that in my notebooks in seminary. They're answering questions nobody is asking. And I made a determination in 1993, heavenly days, uh, 1993, 31 years ago, that I was going to answer questions people really were asking. It's gotten me into all kinds of trouble. But nobody cares about theology. Nobody cares about the theological implications of the resurrection. If you talk to buddy, somebody on the street, nobody cares. Nobody cares about substitutionary atonement. Nobody does. Nobody cares about all the meanings and the layers in this Passover of the Lord vigil, this Easter vigil, which is the most ancient liturgy of the church. Nobody cares. And I could talk to you about it ad nauseum because it was my area of expertise in, in my studies. Because at the end of the day, we are all like Mary. We are all like Mary at the tomb and we're weeping and we're all alone and we face death and we've lost things we cherish and people we love and we've been disappointed and let down and we're weeping and we're looking into a tomb. And we hear a familiar voice behind us. Woman, why are you weeping? And Jesus shows us his hands and his feet and his side. And he says, see, I did all this for love. We want to look at this and unpack the theology, but Jesus and the Father are the most relational beings in the universe. And he tells us, do not touch me because I have not honored my Father. And I have not shown my Father what I have done. And yes, Jesus went through the veil, and Jesus made a way for us with his own body and blood. And yes, Jesus descended to the dead, and he brought up all captivity out of captivity. But this is what's important. Jesus went to the Father. He went to the Father first, and he said, See, Abba, I've gone. And I found your old friend, Adam. He was in Sheol, pondering his failure. He was sitting there, thinking about the loss of paradise and the tragedy he caused for thousands of generations. I found him in the earth, Abba, rehearsing his regrets and his sorrows. Abba, I found him, and I brought him, and everyone else in death back, I went low, and now I can raise the whole creation up. I did this, Abba. I showed them how much you really love them, Abba. And now we have a family. Here are my hands, and here are my feet, and here is my side, and here is my crown. What was a crown of death is now the crown of glory because I have trampled down death by death and I have brought life to those in the tombs. I did it all for love, Abba, and now they know that I really love them and you really love them. You glorified me on the cross and now my glory and my victory is without end. And his victory, he shares with us. And we too can bask in the victor's crown 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that same Spirit that just raised him from the dead, he can do greater works in us and through us. His power working in us to bring light and life into a dark and dying world. And he tells Mary, go tell everyone that my father is now your father. And you are now part of us. You are not an orphan and you are not alone. He did it all for love. Love's redeeming work is done. He is risen, just as he said. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks for listening. If these messages have helped you, please like, subscribe, support and share. You can find out more about Blooming House Fellowship in the description. No matter what's happening in your life, remember, fear not, God can be trusted.